Hello everyone, welcome back to another Jason Talks About Games. Let's just jump right into it. First game I want to talk about is Taking the Gaming World by Storm. Star Wars Destiny. Now, is this a Magic the Gathering killer? No. But it's doing pretty good. This game has that same combative feel. You customize your deck and you duel the other player. It really comes across more like Ash's Rise of the Phoenixborn than it does Magic the Gathering. It's got the combination of dice, you've got a couple a 30 card deck filled with special powers and weapons and upgrades so you can soup up your characters, you can enhance them with dice. The game plays in around 30 minutes it could go from 15 minutes all the way to an hour. Depends on how epic the game is. If one player ever completely runs out of cards, they can lose that way. Otherwise, you just have to kill their two starting characters. Now, I really love this game. The cards come across incredibly thematic, like the powers that they do. So it keeps you in that battle. You, you don't get disengaged from the game because of these outrageous cards that don't make sense. Biggest gripe with the game is probably the same gripe I share with many other people. It's collectible, which blows. It's expensive. Just say you're collecting a a hero deck. You know, you've you've got a you've got a hero deck, you're trying to get some more good guy cards to add to it, you spend fifty bucks on boosters, you get three or four villains, you know, a few hero cards you can use, but nothing that's really gonna help. I can't stand this. I had like two Captain Phasmas and Kylo Ren, and my son had Ray and Finn. We we have a bunch of boosters we went through, but he doesn't have a second dice for one of his characters, so I have to take one of my dice away just so it's more than fair. So I don't like how you can buy a ton of boosters and not get the kind of cards you're looking for. You take the collectability and the price of this game, and it's just a marvelous, fun game, and consider me addictive. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shadows of the Past. 2016 was ripe with these one versus many games. You had Conan, Doom, the others, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All of these games I listed is good. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles really stands out because it's it's just a huge passion project from Kevin Wilson. You can tell when you play. It's balanced pretty tight. The 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 way the scenarios are designed, it's like set up, like pre-set up. Your pieces are here. It was described as like an epic chess match where your pieces are rolling dice to attack. Kind of, but not really. The game plays through a comic book. All the maps are only two boards long, so the playing time of this game is... 30 to 45 minutes of scenario once it's all set up and done. I'm sure some of, some of them are capable of running a bit longer, but for the most part, they pray, play pretty quick. The game is usually over in two to three rounds. The production is great. I just have the retail copy. I don't think I missed out too much by not kickstarting it. I really just expected this game to suck, like another Ghostbusters the board game or what have you. Just... The fans will clamor to it in the first release, and then that's probably all we're going to hear. No, this game is really standing out on its own merits. The action system with the turtles, they each roll dice. They they can, if they don't like what they roll, they can spend a focus token, re-roll your starting dice, and you can share your left and right dice with the turtles on your left and right. So there's a cooperative aspect. You've got to... Decide how you want to arrange your dice because oh, maybe you, Michelangelo, wants to lend Donatello a couple skateboards so he has some movement, but on the other hand, he might really benefit from this, uh, you know, double melee attack thing. The villains play similarly. They've got a deck of cards with similar symbols on them. He's laying the cards out. He gets to keep spawning more minions every round. It's just a brilliant one-versus-many game. 
if I had have played this last year, I think it would have etched out my number 10 on the top 10 of 2016 list. So the game is very streamlined. It's very thematic. Like you can, Leonardo or, you know, the turtles can jump from rooftop to rooftop. They can jump off rooftops onto a pile of garbage. You can climb roofs. You can... You can do a rail slide and attack a bunch of baddies on your way down. Just love this game. I've played maybe half a dozen times now. You're playing through this comic. So just say the, the, the turtles win the first scenario. It's like, okay, we'll go play Battle 3 now. You're skipping Battle 2 because the turtles won. Or go to Battle 4 and you get this little advantage. So you're essentially playing through this story and it's great. All right, enough gushing about TMNT. Next up is Pokemon the card game. My son is eight years old, he's in grade two, and Pokemon cards is all the rage. They don't, none of them know how to play the game, they just like trading the cards. Kind of reminds me of when I collected marbles and stuff back in the day. But my son got a ton of Pokemon for Christmas, and being gamers, I said to him, all right, let's, learn how to play this game and see what it's all about. We did that, we we played with a couple starter decks. The first game felt a little disappointing. You've got to basically get energy cards in your hand to match the attacks you want to do. So it felt a lot like, oh, didn't get one energy, your turn. Oh, didn't get an energy, your turn. Oh, I got an energy, okay, cool, I'm gonna play it. My guy's gonna attack you. Oh, you still didn't get an energy? Oh, too bad, my turn comes around. Oh look, another energy, now I can attack you again. I'm not writing this game off. There has to be something to this game. It's been around almost as long as Magic has, 20 years or even longer. So we're both intent on playing this a couple more times and really trying to get the flow for this Pokemon the card game. So tentatively holding judgment back on that one. Another little card game I've been playing tons of Hanami Koji. It's a little Japanese card game in the vein of Lost Cities, but there's very little comparison. It's it actually, this is kind of like Shot and Totten-y a little bit, but I like this better than Shot and Totten. You've got seven geishas in the middle of the table, and you've got a hand of cards. You, each player has four actions available to him, and that's it. You decide what order you're doing your actions in, you can remove a card from the round, like you, or you can basically pause it from the round, and you get to add that into your scoring at the end of the round, so it's like, you know, a Hail Mary that your opponent can have that you're not planning on. You can simply take two cards, remove them from a round altogether. You have to take three cards from your hand. Your opponent picks one, you get the other two, and then these, the two cards you're left with, you're, you line up behind the appropriate geisha, numbered one, two to five. There's three twos, two threes, a four, and a five. And the number is how many of each of those cards are in the deck. So the five geisha would have five number five cards. The other action you can do is you take two pairs of two from your hand. You lay them down, your opponent takes one pair, you take the other. The last two actions I explain are the main ways that you end up lining up your cards. But it's really full of agonizing decisions because you're like, oh, I mean, he's got to take, if he takes this, then he's going to get majority on that geisha. And the game usually goes one or two rounds. I think I've had one or two games go to three rounds and I've been playing this a ton. At the end of the round, after everything's played, whoever has the most cards behind a geisha, slides a little marker over to your end. If you've got four markers down at your end, you win the game. If you have only three markers, but your point total is 11, then you can win that way as well. So just say you've got the five geisha, the four geisha, and a two geisha down on your side, then you would trump the, the other player that's got four slid down. It's a great little two-player card game. It plays in 10-15 minutes. It's full of wonderful decisions. There's lots of thinking ahead and planning ahead and waiting for your plan to fall into place. You're, you're trying to bait your opponent 
to maybe take cards that seem juicy because you're planning something else. Anyways, it's an inexpensive little 21 card card game, and I highly recommend it. Hanamikoji. Mech versus Minions, playing further along in the campaign with my son. There's not a lot to say about this game. It's just a wonderful co-op game. Great for family play using the the radio play from the Riot website. It's just about a must. Uh, my son is always asking to play this, and we just can't get enough of it. Every time we open a new mission and play it, I'm always like, I think this is my favorite one so far. And then we play the next one, and I'm like, oh, I think this is my favorite one. Anyways, this game has got the market cornered for me in programmable movement. I didn't even want to take a look at the new Robo Rally. There's no point. I've got mechs versus minions. It's going to do everything Robo Rally does and more. So, yeah, you got to check out this game if you haven't heard of it. It's an amazing co op game where you're controlling um, a little dude on a mech, you're crushing minions left, right, and center. Um, you're programming with different cards. Anytime you're, you know, you're you're stepping on minions, you're crushing them, you're trying to accomplish your objective. It's kind of got that legacy thing, like you open uh, the sealed envelope, you get your objective for this scenario. You get new special cards that you can bring with you on the scenario. Anyways, there's tons of reviews and content floating around about this game. If anything, I just had interest you look into this further. It's amazing. Best production quality I've ever seen in a game and best price point for that high production quality. Ashes, speaking of the comparison with Star Wars Destiny, played this with a friend of mine and I really got some love for this game. It's another, you know, magic kind of card game. Dude, duel and dude or lady and you've got um, a set of dice that you roll that represents your different magic you need, different color dice. And uh, you're, you're putting out monsters, you're attacking the other summoner, you're casting spells. I just really like the way the decks work with itself. You know, like every deck you gotta kind of discover how this deck plays and then work it to the strengths. I haven't even touched the deck building with this. I've only used the pre-arranged decks. There's the the four or six that come in the, the base game, and I think there's been four more released. So there's quite a bit of variety out. I just wish I had other friends that were into this game so that I can start like deck building and try my deck against them. There's some cards that only a particular summoner can use, and then the rest is fair game. So I play this game casually every now and again but I enjoy it every time I play it. I like trying, I just grab a random Phoenix Born, they're called, Summoner or whatever, and uh, start pressing buttons and figure out how the deck works. The artwork is top notch, it's just a beautiful looking game. Well designed, smooth. Like I said, I think Star Wars Destiny borrowed a couple things from this game. One uh, family night, my wife picked out the Downfall of Pompeii. This is a great older game, similar to Survive, Escape from Atlantis, Survive Space Attack. We've got Survive Space Attack, and I actually, if I had to choose between the two, I would always pick uh, the downfall of Pompeii. You've got the little town of Pompeii. The game is divided into two phases. The first one, via a deck of cards and drawing, you, you can place your little cubes in these different buildings, and then once um, the second uh, volcano eruption card is drawn, then that phase of the game's done, you just get rid of all the cards, then you've got a bag of tiles. You first draw six tiles and there's symbols where all these different types of tiles will start from, so the tiles will get put in the starting, and then from there they just have to be adjacent to the same symbol. Any meeples below that get picked up and thrown into this little plastic volcano that comes with the game. If you like these type of games where you're, everybody's trying to escape then this one is is just awesome. It's it's great family fun. There's nothing more satisfying than throwing a handful of your opponents into the volcano. I should say there's several exits around the city and you're just trying to move your cubes out of the city. So the downfall of Pompeii. Wonderful family game. 
After playing Clank with my son, uh, my oldest, who's eight, and seeing how easily he grasped the concept and how competitive he was with these deck building, I was uh, I was happy. I was like, this might be one of his favorite genres, deck building. So I ordered Tyrants of the Underdark, another deck building game with a board. So after sitting on the shelf for almost a month, I was finally able to find the opportunity to bust this out with Hayden. And I am quite impressed with it. I only played the one game. It's Territory Control. It's your typical, you know, deck building. You've got a hand of five cards. You've got to play everything. What you don't play gets discarded. You're buying things from the deck. Now there's there's assassins. Like there's minion abilities. All the cards are minions. They're basically minions of the Underdark that you're bringing into your army. And they do things like let you... Um, place assassins on different territories. Um, sorry, different spies in different towns. If you have a spy somewhere, then that provides adjacency for placing some of your your guys. Symbols on the cards will tell you how many um, how many of your own army you can place on the board next to one of your own pieces. Uh, you can. There's cards that'll let you like totally send another player and then put one of your cubes in. So there's this constant back and forth competing for these uh, different cities in the Underdark. And I got to say, like, the production of quality is like, mm, it's, it's not too bad. It's definitely not bad. The card quality is not amazing or anything like that. And it's fairly expensive for what you get in it. But I'm very much looking forward to more expansions. And this is really reviving my love of deck building games. I've always been like, oh, I don't mind deck building. But Clank, Tyrants of the Underdark, given they're really creating some some love for this this mechanic. Can't wait to play again. I'll let you guys know what I think when I get to know that game a little bit better. And next up, Xeno Shift Onslaught from Cool Mini or Not. This Kickstarter showed up a few weeks ago, and I really like Xeno Shift Onslaught. I played it a bunch and I got all the expansions and this has ever happened where you just have too much content, there's just too much stuff to organize, like it got to the point where it's like, alright so we've got all these cards and you've got this wing bay, I almost felt like there was too much stuff, but that aside, the new one came out, we played it and, and again just two player, just my son and I and I'm like, oh that's why I love this game so much. And surprise, surprise, Deck Builder, my son's a little bit older now. He was always like, eh, on the first Xeno Shift, but he loved it. And then he kept asking to play. It's immensely hard, which is great in a co-op game. It's very rewarding when you get somewhere. This is like Pandemic. I never have so much fun losing a game. So we're going to be playing more of this. And one thing I really liked about the game is that they gave you enough space in the box to combine all the previously released content... They really took the time to make sure this everything was running smoothly with this game. You can tell, like, the t Kickstarter took forever. This card game took longer than all of their miniature games. And I think they were just tweaking the balance between all the old content, the new content. They've got rules for integrating expansions in. It's just awesome. This game's going to be getting played a lot more. It's nothing just to open up the lid, grab the randomizers, and and pick a, a creature to a creature type to fight against. There's uh, the original kind, then two or three that came out with the the new set. And if you don't know what this game is, it's a cooperative deck builder. It's kind of got the Starship Troopers vibe to it. Everybody's on this planet because of the resources and they are trying to defend against waves after waves of baddies. The great thing about this game is when you do buy something from the center board it goes straight to your hand and you've got the ability to give cards to other players. You can equip a cool gun you got onto another player's lane because you've got a spot to line up your troops for the round. You've got a spot where all these face down monsters come and one after one you flip a card, the monster will have a special ability. It could be like, oh, attack both the front two lane creatures every time. And then you're using your special abilities of your troop. As the game progresses, you get better troops available to you. It's a really cool, great co-op game. And I'm glad this new one came out and it's 
reignited my love for Xenoshift. So that's a huge thumbs up. Xenoshift Dreadmire. Speaking of cool mini or not, Mass Mora showed up. Another Kickstarter. So I had high hopes for this. There's aspects of the game I just love, but ultimately the game fell kind of flat with me. As a cool mini or not game, I think it's ridiculous that all the monsters are dice. It really takes me out of the game. I mean, with all the Arcadia quest stuff I have, I can substitute a lot of the dice for monsters, and that might that might raise my opinion of the game, but unless my son asks to play this, I can't see myself getting any big desire to try it again. So it's a competitive game. There is a co-op mode, which I tried. I'll talk about that in a sec. But essentially, you start on a single dungeon tile. You roll six dice. Okay, so you're taking turns as you go. You roll six dice. They're going to have different symbols on them. Feet symbols lets you walk around and explore the dungeon. you got bows, which lets you do ranged attacks against monsters you find. Swords, same thing. You've got a magic symbol that you, know, you use for certain functions and a health potion so you can heal up so you roll your dice and I believe you get a reroll and then you start spending them so you go through a dungeon and then a monster might spawn and you just roll a dice and there's that dice you're fighting the thing that initially I just really had some mad love for was that dice system how you start leveling up and you get new abilities to unlock like for example you can have this power that, you know, lets you do a super attack. You've got to take one foot symbol, one bow symbol, lock them onto your guy, and that'll give you this crazy cool attack. And as you get experience, you start leveling up and getting new powers, new things you can lock your dice into. I absolutely love this facet of the game, but the rest of the game was just so meh that it wasn't enough to give this game... I, I couldn't recommend this game. The, the benefit of having this game is I like that they took the time to make crossover kits. So all the figures in here can go into Arcadia Quest and vice versa. So there's that. I haven't 100% written it off again. Um, like, yeah, if my brother wants to play it again, sure, I'm not going to turn a game down. I just, uh, yeah, the big thing is I don't like the... The dice is monsters. I, I think it was unnecessary. They should have went with minis, and they could have used cards to randomize the monster. And the downtime between turns can be awful. If you're playing a five-player game, you can be waiting like ten minutes for your turn to come around. Now, granted, with familiarity with the game, that, that can speed up quite a bit. But, I mean, a five-player game of this could go a couple of hours, two, three hours. It could take forever. The object of the game is just to get uh, 16 experience, and then that signals the last round. Whoever's got the most experience after that is the winner. You get experience from things like picking locks, disarming traps, killing monsters, and maybe playing these treasure cards, which again, underwhelm me. It's basically, they let you do things to mess with the other players in the dungeon. So Arcadia Quest, probably sitting at like a 5 out of 10 for me. It's like a, a great game just waiting to happen. They can really do something cool with this dice system they have. Maybe more content, maybe an expansion can bring this thing to life. I did play the cooperative game as well. It's got a different deck of these treasure cards, the ones that you know mess with the other players. And I still felt just as underwhelmed at the end. You fight, you have this big boss fight at the end. There's some fairly like finicky rules on. Uh, you know, treasure cards, line of sight, traps. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know about finicky, but there is, uh, there's, there's a lot of ongoing questions on BGG. Some common questions keep coming up. But yeah, Mass Mora, Dungeons Arbor Arcadia. There's, uh, there's a lot of people that really do like this game. It just, it doesn't have enough to stand out from other similar themed games. Anyways, let's move right on. Okay, this one I'm happy to talk about. Santorini, this awesome little, wonderfully produced abstract game. 
you've got this little grid map and you've got 3D plastic buildings. You've got two pieces on the board. On your turn, you pick one of your two pieces. You move it in any of the eight adjacent spaces around you that's not occupied by another dude or a building that's too high to jump up. And then you place a block. You win the game by jumping on the third floor of a building. You can jump up one level at a time. So you can't jump from the ground up to the second or third floor. And you can also win if you are unable to move and build on your turn. That's just the basic game. And I love just that. If this game was just that basic game, I would still have crazy praise for it. But on top of this, there is a deck of 35 cards that gives you a special god power. And this really brings the game to life. Really, it, it every time you play it, you're 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 trying to play a little differently. Like the powers can be, you know, if you if you move to an outside edge, then you can immediately do another move. If somebody's on a lower elevation, you can build a building on top of it and remove that dude from the game completely. Uh, I mean, there's 35 of them, and they're all pretty cool. Some of them might appear unbalanced, but I think that there's there's ways to play against each of these. So some of them I initially felt, oh, well, that's unbalanced, but no, no, no. You, you just have to be aware of what they can do, and you're always going to get a game. The last game I'm going to talk about, another one of my favorites. I was so happy to get this one on the table. It's it's been a great month of gaming. Stronghold 2nd Edition. I had a buddy come over for, uh, for a day, and when he expressed interest in this, I was like, yes, let me teach you this. It's a Euro game disguised as an Ameritrash game from Portal Games, Ignacy Trebicek. It's like the Battle of Two Towers. One guy is the outnumbered guys in the castle, and... The other player is the waves of orcs, goblins, and trolls coming to try and break the wall. Now, the game builds wonderfully. The first few turns, the the invaders moving up, and you got the guys on the wall, the archers are picking them off, and the invaders are like, man, how am I ever going to get up there and break the wall? Another two turns come along, and the map is swarming with him. You've got traps up here, he's got... He's got siege towers coming up, he's he's building these ballistas, and they're blasting apart chunks of your wall. This game is very tense, it's such a such a cat and mouse game, and one of my favorite two-player game ever. Um, I played this with my brother quite a while ago. It's not his type of game, but later he said that that was one of the best gaming experiences he's had, was playing Stronghold 2nd Edition. I can't wait for the Undead expansion coming out this year. I have no idea what I'm in store for. I've never played 1st Edition Stronghold or the Undead expansion, but... Oh man, I love this game. And it's randomized every time. And what I mean by that is you don't always have the same actions available to you if you're an invader. You've got five levels of action cards, right? You can spend an action to, um, you know get rid of some of your two and three levels and bring in some of your three, four, or five levels. Uh, and they're not needed till like later on in the game anyway, the, the three, fours, and fives. But each of these levels has five cards, and you're only playing with three of those five every game. So some games you might have mantlets, which will protect you from archers. Other games you might have a ballista. Um, another game you can have a trebuchet. So the fact that you've You've always got different options available to you. Just gives this game even more life. Even if this game was just the same actions every game, I would still love it. I like playing the Invader and the Defender equally. I think it's much harder to play as the Defender. You've really got to know the options available to you. But Stronghold 2nd Edition, Portal Games, and I'm going to end things here. I've been rambling so long, I've had two of my camera batteries died. Alright, so that's my little gaming blog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you continue to watch them. Let me know in the comments below any feedback you might have, things you liked, things you'd like to see, and have a good day guys.